Good morning, welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on my wife's new ride, the 2014 Ford Expedition, 5.4 liter of course. This was the year before they came out with the uh, whatever it is now, the 3.6 liter EcoBoost. 3.5 whatever it is now this is not it this is the the uh, 5.4 this is the same engine as all the uh, uh, f-150s for the last several years so what we're doing here is a brake job front and rear it's going to be a pretty simple job i'm hoping i honestly haven't looked up the manual i haven't looked up youtube videos i'm just going to jump in and attack it i've done plenty of brake jobs um, not too many of them are overly complicated so i'm just jumping in and hoping for the best that said Follow me at your own risk. Only do what I'm doing if you've got no other option. I am not your manual. I am not the uh, how to do it guy. I am a how I am going to do it guy. So keep that in mind when you watch my videos and uh, if you follow what I do. You're more than welcome to follow what I do. Just know that anything that happens to your vehicle is on you. All right, moving on. You might say that this is a little parts cannony because I haven't even pulled off the tires to see if the brakes are bad. Um, what ends up happening is I buy so many vehicles lately and just kind of roll through them is that even when brake pads are good or rotors are good, I find a lot of crappy installs. Um, the more I dig into these vehicles I buy, the more crappy crap I find. And it's, I don't want to say it's getting old because I enjoy fixing this stuff, but I will say it's concerning to me that when somebody else that is not mechanically savvy buys a vehicle that they have the same kind of crap installs on the vehicle they just bought. I'm not saying mechanics are doing crappy things, I'm saying YouTube is huge, people like me are on YouTube and doing stuff and people like you follow what I do hoping that I know what I'm doing. I'm telling you I don't know what I'm doing, but this is what I am doing. So. With YouTube comes a lot of interesting things. I don't even know if this is good. I don't even know if this is bad. I'm replacing it so that I know it's good. Plus it's squealing like freaking insane. Uh, I hate rattles. When I'm driving, there's two things I really, really, really hate. Rattles and squeaks. <laughs> and this is squealing insanely bad uh, from the front. So we're just gonna replace it because it's worth it to me to know that it's done the way that I would like it done. Um, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore, especially with my wife uh, she's sending her off to Colorado while well, she's taking herself to Colorado in this with the kids and I want it to be good to go before then. So we're going to do it. So the choice I've gone with is Callahan. There's not much information online about Callahan brakes and I kind of like that. I don't like buying the crappy crap, but if there's something that looks like it's pretty decent and it's not really well known, I like to buy it. Not because I can help them become known because I'm a very, very, very small YouTube channel, more or less just because I don't like going with the flow of everybody else. So everybody else is on this power stop high and everybody's buying power stop, drill slotted rotors like crazy. Um, so contradictory to what I just said, Callahan I believe is actually made by power stop, but it's a lot cheaper than power stop. Is it a cheaper quality? I don't know. It looks a lot like power stop um, on the pictures online it looks almost identical so i don't really know but i'm going to use power stop so from what i understand we got front and rear pads i think these are the rears i don't really know we're gonna find out later i'm actually kind of surprised by how large these pads are front and rear and i'm really actually hoping that this is the right kit and then for the rotors these are drilled and slotted just like power stops um, I don't know how drilled and slotted is going to do in the snow uh, this winter, but we're going to find out. So these are the drilled and slotted rotors from Callahan. These are what's going to go on. Uh, you don't really need a lot of accessories, don't even need a lot of tools. We are going to use this Permatex brake parts lubricant. Um, that's going to be our grease. I will link this down below. I will link all this down below. And of course, we're gonna get started with this super coffee positive energy crap. <laughs> I enjoy drinking energy drinks just like the next guy. And uh, yes, I'm sure they're not good for you. And I keep looking for alternatives. And I found this in the gas station yesterday, this super coffee. And I was like, you know what? It sounds good. The label looks decent. You know, there's hardly any sugar. There's not really any added caffeine. It's just coffee, which is the caffeine. So 
was like, you know what? I'll give it a try. And you know what? I have no idea if I like it or not. <laughs> it's kind of weird. So, you know when you drink a uh, protein shake from, you know, when you go to the gym and crap? I don't, because I've never been to the gym. Um, but when you do, if you drink a protein drink, you know how it's kind of gritty in your mouth? And it might even give you like a little nasty feeling down in your jowls. It's kind of what this gives you, only it's not loaded with protein. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. Anywho, would I buy it again? No. But I bought three of them and I gotta drink them all because I bought them. So yeah, I want to punish myself for buying something that's yucky. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do oh, is pop the hood. Okay. And we are going to relieve the seal on the brake reservoir. I'm gonna pop that. We're gonna leave it there. Um, we're just gonna let it so it can vent. Reason being, we're gonna compress the calipers later. It's gonna push fluid up here. Um, we should have enough room in the reservoir. We're not gonna spill, hopefully. We'll find out. So we're just gonna do that and put the hood back down. Boop. You can do everything we're about to do on the ground with a jack stand and a jack. I have a lift that I spent $3,000 on, so you dang right, I'm gonna use the lift. You don't have to. You can do this on the ground. Every single brake job I've ever done in my life up until today when we do this one has been on the ground. You can do it in your driveway. All right, so we have the tires off. Um, I'm finding that uh, anti-seize is very important even on the rotor mounting surfaces uh, because we had to kick all of these off and they've only been on for a couple weeks because we just got the tires replaced. That aside, so we pulled the driver's side apart and found a chip in the piston on the caliper. Uh, and I pulled the caliper off and uh, our piston right here is a little bit chipped. That is probably where my squeal is coming from because these pads actually look pretty decent. Um, in fact, they look really good. So what we're gonna end up having to do is get some new pistons or a new cal caliper and uh, go from there. But yeah, that's probably exactly where the squeal's coming from. I would be willing to bet that plays a big portion. So anywho, we're gonna do the rest of this and we'll come back to this later. So typically what I do when I'm videoing with you guys is if it's dual sided, I'll do one side off video. That way we don't have to waste time trying to figure out all the tool sizes and crap on the other side. Uh, I film the side after I already know what tools we're using. So it's all right here laid out. Case in point, boop, those are the tools. So this one, I pulled the driver's side apart. We need a piston, which means we're just gonna buy a remand caliper for the driver's side. Um, but that also means I want to tear all four corners apart and figure out what else I need to buy at the store so I can just go to the store twice, three, four times instead of eight, nine, ten. Because uh, it never fails. After I come back from the store, I gotta go back. So I try to limit as many uh, trips to the store as I can. So we're gonna pull the driver's side apart. Your tires come off just fine. And on this side too, so the pads look really thick. They look very thick. Um, same with the rears but the rotors are all super, super grooved on all four corners so far, um, which means I'm guessing uh, the person I bought it from, like you can even see, like, gosh, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I can see from my naked eye four feet away how grooved this is, um, like it is just trashed. So that either means somebody just threw some random pads on, kept the rotors as is, didn't even bother replacing them, Maybe we've got a stuck calipers. Maybe we've got, I don't know what we've got. Either way, uh, I'm glad I decided to just replace everything because peace of mind goes a very long way. So we're gonna go ahead and pop, we're gonna go ahead and pop this caliper off uh, so that we can see what's underneath and see if we need to buy. Uh, I need a caliper on the driver's side, so I'm already gonna go ahead and buy two. Um, so I guess this isn't necessarily necessary. But the one on the driver's rear is good, but I'm gonna pop the passenger rear off because if this one's bad, then I wanna buy all four corners. So all we really need here is a 15 millimeter socket, wrench, whatever you got. It's gonna be this bolt here, which goes into this uh, slide, slide bolt thing, majiggy. And then there's one down here as well. And that's all we're gonna pop off. Uh, I have, handy dandy ratchet that I like to use. It's like one of my favorite tools in the garage. 
go. We're just gonna pop this off. Once it gets too loose, you might have to hold this with one hand um, just to keep it from not doing, you know, that whole situation. And we're gonna pop this one off. Yep, in that situation right there. So I'm gonna put the camera down so that I can hold uh, that little washer right here, but nothing exciting. We're just gonna pull the bolts out and uh, that's about it. So I like to do <clears throat> the bottom ones first, only because it's easier for me to hold everything while I'm undoing the top one and the bottom one. So that's all that looks like. Um, on most of the vehicles I do, this is a lot longer because it's actually the portion that allows it to slide. This system's a little bit different, so it's just a little tiny bolt. And now I can hold the caliper while I unspin the top one, just easier for me. There's your top one, and we're just going to use a little pry bar, uh, nothing too exciting, to pry this off of the bracket. Once you got it enough, you can get your fingers on it, you can get leverage, like so. And we're just gonna flip her around like so, without kinking your brake line overly horribly. So this side, I do not see any chips in the caliper itself, but if you look at this gasket, I mean this boot, this dust protector, it's trashed. So we are definitely replacing both fronts. Um, if you're doing one side, you might as well do the other side anyway, but definitely, definitely doing both fronts. So now we're gonna move over to the back. Yes, we will finish that brake job when we get back with the new calipers. So over here in the back, so as far as the rears go, it's a very similar process. The only difference is, is on the caliper. So this is where your pads are sliding. Right here is your breather. Right above it is this little rubber protector cap. We're just gonna pull that off just with a screwdriver. Set that aside. And then there's gonna be another one of those down here, right under where the piston is. Stick your screwdriver in there, pop it out. So from there, it's a seven millimeter uh, Allen that's in here. I'm just gonna stick that in, put a ratchet on it. And we're gonna pull that out. I'm just gonna break that loose and then we're gonna do the bottom one first. Because like I said, it's easier for me. Do what you want and how you want. So here's the fun part with these types of pins, sliding pins is once you get it unscrewed, which you'll never know, I put pressure, uh, twisting pressure on and try and pull it out. The goal is to pull out the pin with your Allen socket, but you never know when it's totally loose. There we go. So as you can see, by putting twisting pressure on it, oh, I'm able to pull out the pin with the socket head. That's just my method. I don't know if it's the right method. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Either way, it's my, ah! It's my method. So she's done with the thread. So now again, we're just gonna put a pressure on an angle. Uh, this is probably why these rotors are bad, because nothing is lubed. Uh, so nothing's sliding like it should. Oh man, these are seized in there. <clears throat> and that would be why our rotor's probably toast. This is something you want to grease with every brake job, guys. <clears throat> this is how your caliper moves. If it ain't greased, if it's seized like this when you can't even get it out, then uh, your caliper is not gonna slide. <clears throat> All right, I need two hands. All right, pin is out. I'll probably buy, those are super cheap. They're like a couple bucks for pins. I'll link them down below. I'm just gonna replace them. You could probably clean them up, but this one is all grooved. It looks like it hasn't had that great of a life. So I'll just get some while we're at the store. All right, so now these should be free to pop off. Oh, we don't even need a pry bar. Okay. I'm gonna put that right there. Yeah, this is very, very, very grooved. Very, very, very grooved, uh huh. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compress this caliper, this piston, because these brake clamps are, because these brake pads are clamped in, so this brake pad actually extends the leg there. There's probably not gonna be enough room to pull it over and out. 
But look at these pads. These pads look like they've got crap tons of life on them. I'm no mechanic, but I'm expecting what happened is somebody just threw new pads on, didn't bother with the rotors or greasing anything. They literally just threw some pads on and called it a day. That's not adequate in my book. We need to do this right because this is what keeps you from uh, going when you're supposed to be stopping. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and compress that, check out that piston and go to the store. All right, so again, for the 14th time, we're just gonna try and stick this down in here wherever you can make it fit. Uh, ideally, you're not gonna go crooked, but it looks like we're gonna have to go crooked here. As long as you pop the cap in the, on the brake reservoir, it should go really easy. Um, if it's super stiff, you probably forgot to pop the clamp or the <laughs> pop the, the, the uh, reservoir lid. And this is going super easy, which is good because it also means the piston isn't seized into place. I'm just gonna go till the bottom's out. So anyway, now this, because these are clipped into the piston, I'm just gonna grab it this way and pull it out. And there we go, and that's the clamp, all rusted out and nasty. But this piston right here actually looks pretty good or it will be good after we give it a good cleaning. So it looks like we're gonna have to give the rear piston, caliper, whatever you wanna call them, really good cleaning, but they'll be okay. The fronts, we're gonna go ahead and go buy some remands and uh, put some remands in there. Looking under here, we've got some other stuff to do. Here is your uh, <laughs> sway bar link, a little bit brokeded. So we'll be taking care of that too momentarily. Well, let's go buy some uh, calipers. All right, so we went to our local store, got some reman calipers and uh, some other stuff. Well, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, so reman calipers for the front. We got some brake sliding pins for the rear because they were only like two bucks. And we also got the uh, bleeder screw for the rear too. Where did I put that? All right, and then we also got the brake bleeder screws for the rear. I believe these calipers are good. They don't need to be replaced like the fronts do. They just need some refreshment. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's start with the back. We gotta get this rotor off. In order to do that, I gotta find somewhere to put you guys. So the rotor's gonna come off. Now these have the brake shoes in the rear. You can either adjust them and pull this off or you can just go to town and beat it with a hammer. And the fun loving guy that I am, we're gonna go ahead and beat it with a hammer. Now, keep in mind, if you beat it with a hammer, uh, you're going to uh, have to replace this. We kind of have to anyway. We're gonna get it off regardless of how it comes off, so hammer time. Plus, it cleans everything out, as you can tell by everything dropping. Once you get it all loosened up. Just give her a little spin. Oops. We go and now we essentially cleaned everything too or ruined it depending on who you talk to there we go all right rotor is removed before we do too much else uh we're just going to take a quick look at these pads these pads look halfway decent not so horrible that i plan on changing them anyway we're going to clean off this mating surface here we're going to clean off the uh cat the brake pad slides which is right here and we're just going to do this an overall cleaning not super not super professionally, just a basic whoo clean it. So let's do that. And for that, I'm just using a wire wheel. And we're just gonna give all this stuff a quick scratch. I don't know if this is good or bad, right or proper, but it's what we're doing. I'm going to grab my brake parts cleaner. I'm gonna need more of this soon. And just do it once over. Pretty much empty. Some pretty gnarly looking fluid coming out. That's trash, grab another. All right. See, and you get stuff like that. Big huge clumps of nastiness. It's like chocolate milk coming out, baby. 
none of this is probably necessary, but all of this is what I'm doing. All right, so from here, we gotta remove our pads. We already removed that one, remember, so we could check the cap piston out. We're just gonna pull that off like that. And then you can either grab a wire wheel just like we did before, clean this up a little bit. We're not gonna go to town. We don't wanna ruin this dust cover boot. It's still good and flexible. And we're gonna grab some brake grease. Like I said, I will link this stuff down below. I've actually never used the purple before. And uh, the brush is kind of a pain in the butt. But the stuff I used before, I don't think was Permatex and it had the same problem, so. As long as it's sticky and slippery, I'm good. So now we grease that. You could also just grease the back of the pad. When I grease the back of the pad, I tend to get way more grease than I need. So by greasing just the contact point there, I end up with less uh, grease mess. So now getting this in is the tricky part because essentially you have to push these in while they go in together. But there we go, just like so, clips into place. Now this one's the same way. I'm just gonna grease the inside of these flat spots here. So then this one's the same way. These little clips gotta clip into place. I find it actually easier to slide this one in from up above, like that. Well, I find that way easier on the backs. So the next thing I'm going to do, and when I say I, I mean, that's what I like to do, is I'm going to do these little ears. I'm just gonna grease them up fairly liberally, because these are what's going to allow your caliper to slide. I wanna grease both sides up. Throughout this process, you don't want to get any grease on the pads or the rotor. Oh, speaking of the rotor, haha, <laughs> we need to put that on. Let me grab the rotor. All right, so for anybody that was curious, these rotors do come labeled in the box. So this kit did not come with any instructions whatsoever. Where did I put my brake clean? There it is. So these, this kit did not come with any instructions whatsoever, so I don't really, know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just doing it because I'm doing it. It doesn't say to clean the pads, it doesn't, or uh, the rotors. I'm just gonna take a little brake clean, spray them off real quick. Uh, not a big deal. So, literally, uh, oh, come on, don't die on me now. It died on me now. It's all right, we'll just grab another one. Oop, I'm running low. And there we go. Whoop. Spray it off. I do fairly liberally because I don't think it hurts nothing. Just to get any grease or anything on from the factory. I'm gonna spray that off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anti-seize this entire surface here. So again, right or wrong, I don't know. Nor do I particularly care. But if you can tell me if this is a bad idea or a good idea in the comments, that'd be appreciated. I'm just going to, now that we're in South Dakota, and uh, I'm expecting a rust fest here in another couple months. I'm just gonna coat this with anti-seize. I don't know that it'll stop it from rusting, but hopefully it'll stop it from seizing to each other. <laughs> Needed, don't know. Wanted, don't know. Doing it, yep. Making a mess for later and next time I get in here, probably. So now we're gonna take our rotor. For anybody that wants to jump on and say this is backwards, it came labeled from the factory. This says rear passenger side. So it's on the rear passenger side. As we're going to take a caliper and we're going to slide this in there. Mm -hmm. So I think I need to clip the, oh, go in like that. Yep, there we go. Okay, so important to note, because you probably didn't see that. This little ting here has to go on the inside of this. That's gonna keep your caliper from falling back out. There's nothing on the bottom side to do that, but that's what it should look like when you're done. I will link some slide pins down below, so check those out. That uh, comes in this big old box. There's one. So what I'm gonna do with this, in order to try and keep my fingers clean, I'm going to put this in the seven mil and hold it. And then I'm gonna grab my brake grease and I'm gonna coat fairly liberally because I kinda want a lot of grease in here. I'm not doing on the threads, and I'm just doing on the front of the shaft because then as it goes in, not that liberally, this is really clumpy grease. Uh, as it goes in, it'll spread itself out. Something like so. And we're gonna do, kinda spin this as it goes in. Yes, I know I am going to make a mess, but such is life. 
so there it goes. You gotta find the hole. Once you get the hole, I'm just gonna thread it in a few threads to hold everything in place and do the other one. Oh, this one, the brake line's kind of in the way, so we're not gonna be able to use our socket, which means I'm gonna get messy. Okay, I'm gonna tighten those to Ford specifications. Okay, there's that. We're gonna go ahead and put these caps on right now. There's one, there's two. And we are going to change this bad boy right here with a brand new one. Again, I will link this down below for you guys. All right, we're gonna put a drain pan down here to catch some brake fluid. We're gonna have this at the ready. I wanna try and pop this loose here. You are gonna spill brake fluid. Just the way it goes. And that is totally tight. Let me go this way. Yeah, hey, that's loosening. All right, so you're gonna spill brake fluid. Make sure your reservoir's full, reservoir. And we're probably gonna flush this fluid when we're done, but we're not done right now. So we will take our new one and thread it back in. All right, now we got a fresh brake bleeder screw there. All right, so with that, your brakes in the rear are pretty much done. Uh, we're going to bleed after we do the front. Uh, we gotta finish the front first. Uh, we're also going to have to purge the uh, brakes because we compressed the caliper. So our first couple of uh, pedal pops are gonna be pretty uh, juicy, loosey, loosey, juicy, loosey, whatever. But that is the finished product as far as what it looks like. Now we're gonna move to the front. All right, so if you were just doing your brake pads, at this point, you could just pop these loose, replace your clips and stuff, and pop them back in, and you're good to go. We're replacing the rotor, brake pads, and the caliper, remember, so we are going to attack that right now. All right, so to remove your pads, I'm just going to grab them and yank them out like so. Uh, it is important to note, too, though, <clears throat> that these ears go on the piston side of the caliper. So you see how those jut out? Look on the piston side. Ironically enough, I'm looking at the new pads. They don't have ears on them. Uh, I got scared. I thought I put both sets of ears on that on the driver's side. Turns out there's no ears on them. I'm gonna pop these up, and these are a 21 millimeter for me. And this is just your caliper mounting bracket, which my new calipers come with. So, oh, camera's in my way. I can't get under it. There we go. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to grab this one too. Ah, I will link this super cool ratchet down below as well. When you guys buy stuff off of those links, I do make a little money off of it, so I appreciate it. Even if you just click on it and go buy something else, I make a little bit of money on that. So I also appreciate that. Boop. All right, there's a few things we gotta do. One is we gotta take these bolts off right here one and two and then we can mount the bracket up in place and then we can do the rest on the old brackets was a 13 on these new ones it seems to be a 14. try to do this one-handed so that I'm gonna pull the rotor off oh i'm gonna do the same thing clean her up a little bit throw some cardboard down here on the floor clean her off real quick all right once the brake Stuff dries, same thing, coat this with anti-seize, good idea, bad idea, don't know, but we're doing it. I don't know if you guys can hear that moaning, but that's one of my children moaning about something that they probably did wrong and their mommy chewed them out for, now they're upset. <laughs> All right, slap that into place. We can take our bracket, which is gonna come out like so-ish. Grab one of our bolts. I'm gonna put this in place to the best of our ability. And then I'm gonna take my anti seize, which I'll link down below. And just like before in the rear, we're gonna throw some of this on here. Because living in South Dakota, I get the feeling that's a good idea. Now we're gonna line this up, slap that in place. I'm gonna take the bottom one back out. The reason I don't do this first is because trying to aim everything in gets really messy. And anti seize, man, anti seize is such a freaking mess. I really don't like it. I really hope this pays off because I get really nasty when I'm doing it. Like everything just turns to silver. Like the Tin Man in uh, Dorothy Land or whatever the heck that movie's called. Scarecrow Land? Scarecrow. What's the Scarecrow movie with Dorothy? 
All right, taking these to manufacture specifications, ah, which for us is about that tight. Once that's all in place, we're good to go for our uh, brake mounting hardware. Our brake mounting hardware did not want to set on the other side, but essentially it just goes on like so. This uh, thin tab inside, big tab outside. For anybody that wants to know. So next thing is our brack, there's our pads. Our pads, just like everything else, I'm gonna grease these too. So these I grease a little bit differently. The only part that slabs is slides is on this slide right here. So you can either put some grease there, like so, or you can grease the actual ear of the rotor of the pad. I'm gonna do that. Now, like I mentioned before, your pads have little ears on them. That's for the caliper side, so make sure it goes on the caliper side. Mine don't. So, you get to pick what side. But again, I gotta see more than you gotta see, so that's where I'm at with that. There we go. Okay, so that one's in. Same thing on this side. Slide this one into place. Okay, there we go, those are in place. Now we're ready to mount the new caliper. So when it comes to mounting the caliper, you can either spread some grease on the back of the pad right here. Uh, that's what I used to do. Now I like to grease just the contact points on the caliper because I find I do a lot less over greasing this way because this is only the parts that are gonna touch rather than the whole freaking pad. There's some grease here, here, and here. Uh, your brake bleeder always goes up so that air can escape when we bleed it. Look how smoothly that went. Okay, so same thing with earlier. We're gonna get one in, then just put a dab of anti seize on the other one and get that in right down here. Work this to your manufacturer's specifications. Okay, and we're gonna take this top one back out. A little anti seize on that. Pain in the butt, but we're almost there, guys. All right, so now the only thing left to do with getting this done is switch this brake hose off of the old brake caliper and onto the new. Right, so we're gonna put a drain pan down below to catch any brake fluid right there. We're gonna try and point this up in the air as much as we can. We're gonna grab a pair of vice grips and we're just gonna go over here and clamp this line shut like so. And that should help us keep everything from leaking out. Okay, so there's the new banjo bolt that came with the new caliper. All right, so the new caliper came with the new banjo bolt and the crush washers. So I'm gonna put one on there right now. I'm gonna hold the other one for safekeeping over here. And now we are ready to go ahead and bust this loose, switch it over. I'm gonna have to break this off. Okay. You are gonna lose some fluid, so just be mindful of where that fluid is gonna go. Ugh. Very bad fit. Trying to get it where the fluid's not gonna get in my way everywhere. See, there we go. Whee! It's all the stuff sitting in the caliper. All right, so we're done with this banjo boat. So the previous crush washer needs to come off. And then these crush washers do not like coming off. I'm just using a screwdriver. There we go, that popped off. And we're gonna kinda do the other side as well. that and try and clean this up the best we can so then to place this in place if you're questioning where it goes just look at your old one um, this is gonna go just like that so we're gonna put our banjo bolt in and then we're gonna put our crush washer on and we're just gonna put it in place and then we're gonna torque it down to manufacturer specifications whatever those are you don't want to over tighten but you don't want to under tighten Okay, so now before I remove my uh, vice grips, I'm going to loosen the bleeder screw. The reason I do that is I don't want to release this. This is all full of air, and I don't want the air to find a way to bubble back up. I want to give the air an escape. So I'm just going to break this loose, and then I'm gonna undo my vice grips. Theoretically, now the brake fluid can flow down the line, fill this up, and as it's filling it up, it has a place to go through this bleeder screw. That might take a moment because this whole thing has got to fill up. At this point, you also want to make sure you have fluid in your reservoir. It's also important to make sure this can gravity feed itself out because you want to make sure your banjo bolt is actually clear. 
and you didn't accidentally buy one with a plug in it. See, and now there it goes. And that's what you call gravity bleeding. I don't know that that's appropriate to do by itself. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna do an official bleed uh, here in a minute. But that's gravity bleeding, so you know pretty much all the air has made it out. For the record, don't worry if that takes a while because that was like a full four minutes before that started training. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and correct this closed for now while we finish up the brakes. All right, there we go. All right, so once you got your tires back on, everything on the ground, everything's tightened up, torqued to specs. We're gonna come in here under the hood, put our cap back on, which I already did, but whatever. Um, and then we're gonna jump in the vehicle. And now we're gonna start her up. So your first few brake pumps, there is no pressure in the system. So we're gonna have to build it. I don't know if you can see that there, but I'm just gonna push the foot pedal to the floor all the way, let her up. I'm gonna do that till it firms up. That time only went about halfway, about halfway. There we go. It's almost normal here. So I think that's about normal. So now we're gonna shift her into reverse and get it to where I can get in and out of the door. <laughs> I'm gonna back up a little bit, make sure we can brake, which we can, that's beautiful. Need to check our fluid level, and we are right at the max. So before I put the cap on, I filled this up by the way. We are right on the max line, so we're good to go for a test drive. Okay, so important to note, when you take your test drive, your first test drive after doing brakes, doesn't matter if you did front and rear, just rear, just front, your brake pedal might be a little squishy for the first few stops. After the first stop or two, it should firm up like normal. If it doesn't, you got a problem. You either got air in the lines, uh, a cracked bleeder, or just something's not setting right. As far as breaking these pads in, uh, refer to the manufacturer of the pads. Um, everybody has a little different style. Some people don't, some companies don't even have one. So like these Callahans, there's no instructions whatsoever on how to break them in. So what I'm gonna do is do the same way I typically do, which is I'm just gonna take it for a drive and just do a whole bunch of series of get it up to 35, slowly break down, up to 35, slowly break down. I'm gonna do that about 10 times. After about 10 times, I might slam on the brakes just to make sure everything still works before I let my wife and kids take this out on the road. So that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if that's right, don't know if it's wrong, don't know if it's proper, but that's what I'm doing. So remember, only copy me at your own risk and uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, keep watching my videos. I got a whole playlist on this in the F-150, guys. So stay tuned, keep watching, and if you feel so inclined, check out the Amazon links, the PayPal link, and the Zelle information. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.